Previously on Engineering the Jigsaw, we've said how, about how ODX can be used to describe the external perspective of vehicle diagnostics. What does that mean though? Let's find out. Hi everybody, I'm Ian Cunningham from Vector GB. Welcome to this foundation episode of Engineering the Jigsaw, foundation episode number 16, What is ODX? In this episode, we're picking up directly from foundation episode number 15, our previous episode. We're going to take a deeper look at ODX, Open Diagnostic Data Exchange, as standardized by ISO 22901 part one. It's important to reiterate that exchange in the sense of this standard is in terms of the parameterization of a tester. This even includes how a tester will display information to a technician. So the ODX standard defines several ODX categories and an ODX category relates to a kind of data that a tester might need. Now it's really important to say, before we go too much further, that it is not mandatory to use all of the categories defined in the standard. Roughly, very roughly, in order of how commonly they are used, the categories are ODXD, ODX C, and there's a subset of C called CS, ODX V, ODX F, ODX E, and ODX F D. Now, there is another category defined in the standard, but it's so rarely used, if at all, we aren't going to talk about it today. Now, it's important to say as well, before we go on too much further, that an ODX file can contain only one category. We'll come back to how we can work around this later. So the first ODX category we're going to talk about is ODXD. ODXD is the most commonly used category. It corresponds to the diagnostic data. So the kinds of requests and the kinds of responses that a tester might send and ECUs may send back to them. Now these requests and responses are described by by byte in terms of the data streams. And this is one of the aspects that means ODX is really an expert format. You really have to understand byte by byte how a request is structured and how the response is structured as well, byte by byte. And on the subject of structure, the structuring within ODX that we use to represent those bytes influences how a tester will actually show information to a technician using the tester. So when we are creating our ODX, we can affect what the technician sees. And this is another aspect that makes ODX an expert format. We have to understand not only the diagnostic protocol with extreme detail, but we also have to understand the impact of structuring within ODX on what a tester will show to a technician later on. Now, let's move on. Now, diagnostic protocols often require specification of values such as timers and uh, or timeouts. And these communication parameters, or COMPARAMs for short, may be contained in ODXC or ODXCS if we're just storing a, a subset of them. Now, moving on again to our next category. Now, here we now see a picture where we have two ECUs which are accessible via two different bus technologies from the tester. So the tester needs to know which network, connect which network connection to use to communicate with each ECU. This vehicle information is carried in ODX-V. Next, a tester might need to apply a software update to one or more ECUs. The related flash information, such as compatible part numbers, is carried in ODXF. For well, flash stands for, for F stands for flash. Um, we talk about flashing ECUs sometimes, but really we can think it's a it's a software update information package. It's important to say at this point that the script 
or the series of requests that have to be sent by the tester are not part of ODXF. They have to be defined separately. So the test already has to know which requests to send in which order. All ODXF tells it is the data that it needs to insert into those requests. Because it's common to need to configure ECUs, we can start to think about our next ODX category. So for example, we may need to configure an ECU to display miles per hour or kilometers per hour, or even to tell it on which side of the vehicle the driver sits. And so testers may need to write a predefined set of configuration information that contains this to an ECU. And this ECU configuration data is carried in ODX category E. So probably the, the most complex, but also the least used category we're going to talk about today. So we have potentially a number of ECUs in a vehicle and we need to think about how then diagnostics corresponds to the different functions that are being provided by the different ECUs. So for example, braking has a set of diagnostics associated with it. The lighting system has a set of diagnostics associated with it and the motor in an electric vehicle or, or well, any vehicle has a set of diagnostics associated with it, which may be in, in a number of different ECUs. ODX FD relates diagnostics to functions. And as mentioned before, there is another ODX category we are not going to talk about today. So to help us be efficient, it might be useful to have common definitions of information such as units or conversions or timing values and ODX provides several ways to have this capability. There is the ability to have linking, inheritance and referencing both between and within ODX files. So if you want to work with ODX, it is essential to understand these mechanisms in detail so that you don't accidentally change the wrong thing and break the, the tester parameterization for a vehicle. Again, this is a reason why ODX is an expert format. Uh, it's not something that most people would want to work with on a, on a daily basis. So because when we fit ECUs into different vehicles or locations, we may need to think that they connect to slightly different things. And it's important then to be able to describe variants of ECUs and how to identify them. So here again, we see our electric motor and its associated ECU. In some vehicles, perhaps we put this at the back of the vehicle and in other vehicles, perhaps it goes to the front. And in each case, it has slightly different connections, slightly different diagnostics. So clearly we need to know which variant of the motor controller we are actually connected to, to be able to do diagnostics with it correctly and not suddenly start getting error messages from the, the ECU because we're trying to ask it to do things it, it doesn't do in its present configuration. The next thing we should think about, we've said how we can only have one ODX category within a file. When we want to distribute ODX, we want to have all that information in, in one file though, but we can only have a single category in one file. ODX provides a concept of packaged ODX or PDX containers that are able to carry different categories. Alongside the ODX files we want to transport, we also have an index that tells the tester how to understand what is in the package. We can then put many many ODX files into a single PDX and have the simplicity of transferring a single file to our tester. Of course, these files may have many, many, many different kind of links between them because it really is a Swiss army knife when we're talking about ODX and the size of uh, a PDX rapidly usually expands beyond what a human being can cope with. And in general, 
the ODX standard is incredibly feature rich and flexible. And of course, this makes the data relatively complex. And if we want to work with process partners, if we want to really exchange data between businesses or within, within a business, between departments, rather than just taking data to put on a tester, we need authoring guidelines or AGL. Now, the authoring guidelines help us to constrain the complexity of the standard to make it usable. And it also means that our tester doesn't have to try to cover the whole of the standard when we're developing it, we can select which parts of the standard we need to support. And then we just have authoring guidelines that tell us which parts we're, we're using. And then we need checkers to match the authoring guidelines to make sure we've actually stuck to those authoring guidelines, which is another topic again. Now, as a summary, the ODX standard specifies different kinds of ODX category to carry different kinds of information. There are also referencing, inheritance, and linking mechanisms to allow reuse of information between and within files. The ODX standard also specifies how to describe and determine variants of ECUs. Packaged ODX or PDX is used to get a single file to transfer because we can only put one single category into an individual ODX file. Authoring guidelines then are used to constrain the complexity and a matching checker is essential to make sure that the test that we're trying to apply the data to in the end will actually be able to work with it. Please visit our website for further details on Vector's support for ODX, both in terms of projects and also in Vector's tools. Vector has a wealth of experience in helping people introduce ODX into their businesses in a pragmatic way. So if you're thinking about ODX, please come to us for some assistance. In terms of tools, the two most important tools to talk about, Candela Studio, are diagnostic specification authoring tool has the ability to export ODX corresponding to the diagnostic specification within Candela Studio. And if we really want to be a format and protocol expert and work with ODX in its native form, we ha also have a tool called ODX Studio, which allows us to work natively with ODX data, so directly within the ODX data model. So you really have to understand how ODX works to use it. That's everything for today. I'm Ian Cunningham from Vector GB. Bye. Really hope you've enjoyed this episode of Engineering the Jigsaw. Make sure you, if you have, you give it a thumbs up in YouTube. If you have questions or ideas, then give us a comment down below the video. If you don't want to do it in public, if you want to keep it private, then drop us an email to our special email address engineering.jigsaw at vector.com. You can find a link to a web page with those contact details on in the description for this video. Make sure that you subscribe to get notified as we release new episodes and as Vector publishes its excellent and informative videos on its YouTube channel. Make sure to check out our playlists. We have our foundation episodes playlist and also intermediate level playlist as well for you to binge and catch up with. We'll catch you for another episode soon. Goodbye.